coming up on News Live at 6, cases of violence are rising throughout the country and here in Syracuse. And what bill a New York senator is backing, the immediate reactions and criticisms. And we're live with Brandon Williams' new opponent, Sarah Clee Hood's exclusive interview, coming up on News Live at 6. This news leader. Sarah Clee Hood is launching her campaign for Congress. Welcome to News Live at 6. I'm Bradley Hoffenstein. And I'm Tyler O'Neill. Right now, she's the only candidate running against Syracuse Congressman Brandon Williams. We're joined now live from Clee Hood's launch party with our Citrus TV reporter, Luke Radel. Good evening, Luke. Hey there, guys. I'm here with Brandon Williams' new opponent, Sarah Clee Hood, at her launch party here in Syracuse. Sarah, thank you so much for joining us tonight on Citrus TV News. Thank you. Glad to be here. Thanks as always, Luke. All righty. So I want to get right into the questions with you. Your opponent, Congressman Williams, uh, released his quarter, quarter one finance reports uh, with the FEC. We see a lot of donors like Harlan Crow, folks from Texas, some oil executives out there. What are your thoughts about his campaign contributions thus far? Well, I think it's more of a you are what you preach. Um, those do donations don't come from central New York. They come from people that have a much higher income than pretty much every central New Yorker. He is just not in step or in tune with the community that he is currently representing. Yeah. Now, I want to talk about your campaign. You launched it last week. Uh, and on your campaign website, you mentioned the fact uh, that you say Brandon Williams is anti-Social Security. Um, but in a statement on February 26th, the congressman said that he supports those programs and will not vote to slash them in any way. So how do you reconcile those two statements, one from you and one from him? Sure. I think when you're uh, voting lock and step with Marjorie Taylor Greene, who is obviously a Social Security um, opponent and against, uh, well, she is for those cuts, um, you don't get to say that you will increase the age for Social Security and then say that you are against cuts. That right there in and of itself is fundamentally a cut of services to folks that rely on that for their livelihood. When, when has the congressman said that he supports raising the retirement age on Social Security? That has been part of his initiative uh, in one of the caucuses that he is a member of. Okay, I just, I, he has said explicitly that he supports Social Security and Medicare. Do you believe him on that front, or do you think that he's actually going to cut Social Security and Medicare, despite the fact that he said he won't? I think at the end of the day, we need to look at his voting record. It's very easy to say one thing when one in four in your district rely upon Social Security and the services it provides versus what is happening in Washington, D.C. behind closed doors. Absolutely. And now let's talk about your campaign. You're launching it tonight. Tell the folks out there why you're running for Congress. Oh, I'm not. Oh, here we go. Um, we did a lot last year in uh, the primary. We built a community of folks that are dedicated to the necessary needed changes for our central New York community. And we are really building upon that success. Um, Brandon Williams is a representative that does not live here. He does not pay taxes here. Uh, he is looking to um, really fundamentally erode those programs and services that our community relies upon for their daily quality of life. And it's highly time that we have a representative that not only has roots here, is raising a family here, but understands the intricacies of being Central New York and what it means um, if your community is a farming community, is a rural community, or has an urban setting. You don't get to understand those um, implications to the community unless you're living here and he just he hasn't shown up for us and I haven't seen anything positive coming out of his campaign that truly represents the people and the important priorities of Central New York. What is one issue that you're hoping to focus on throughout this campaign? Oh my gosh, there, there are so many areas that we could look at. I think um, as a woman, um, it is a highly important for me for, um, to focus on um, women's health at, um, and abortion. My grandmother fought this fight. My mother fought this fight. I'm fighting this fight. Raising two young daughters, I do not want them to have to fight this fight to ensure that they have the ability to maintain their livelihood and make decisions that will um, have a direct implication on their future and their ability to find success. Sarah Clee Hood, thank you so much for joining us. Bradley and Tyler, back to you guys in studio. Thank you, Luke. This week, a Western New York State Senator is proposing an anti-trans bill here in studio to discuss is Citrus TV's Cora Mayor Costa. Cora? Thank you, Tyler. New York State Senator George Borrello is sponsoring a bill requiring players on female school sports team to have been assigned female at birth. The bill is currently in the committee in the New York State Senate. Burrell's justification for the bill is to, quote, 
is, quote, rather, this legislation is necessary in ensuring fair and equal opportunity for women in sports is maintained by ensuring a level playing field. The bill accounts for both public and private schools in New York State. If approved, all central New York schools would be required to heavily regulate players in female sports teams and adhere to the bill's provisions. The bill would begin June 1st. The bill has been criticized by LGBTQ plus groups. Statewide advocacy organization Equality New York responded saying they are, quote, states that are actively attacking our transgender and non-binary youth. The organization urges the legislature to not support the bill and plans to act if the bill gets passed in the committee. Borrello's bill follows a string of anti-transgender laws popping up around the country. Last night, Twitter removed a five-year-old policy protecting transgender individuals from being misgendered or deadnamed. The president and CEO of GLAAD, Sarah K. Ellis, says that the decision, quote, pulls Twitter even more out of step with TikTok, Pinterest, and Meta, which all maintain similar policies to protect their transgender users at a time when anti-transgender rhetoric online is leading to real-world discrimination and violence. The bill is still to be decided in the committee. The meeting date has yet to be announced as well. Reporting in studio, I'm Cora Mayor Costa. All right, Cora, thank you. The Syracuse Mets are hosting their college night tomorrow. Anyone with a valid student ID is able to purchase general admission tickets for just $10. The Mets are also having Dollar Thursday, where all fans can purchase dollar sodas and $2 hot dogs. Sounds like a deal to me, Tyler. If you're interested in attending, you can still get tickets through the Otto's Army Instagram page. And finally, some good news for students at Casanova College. Students will have their records maintained long after the school's closure this summer. Thanks to an agreement between Casanova and Lemoyne College, all student alumni and personal records will be moved to Lemoyne and a space on the Lemoyne campus will be dedicated to preserving Casanova College's nearly 200-year legacy. The latest now, there have been multiple cases of violence, both on and around campus recently. Lauren Holdmeyer asked some students about the issue and is in studio tonight with the details. Good evening, Lauren. Good evening, Bradley and Tyler. Violence has been rising across the country recently, and Syracuse is no exception. SU and the surrounding area has experienced multiple incidents of violence lately, and Citrus TV spoke with some students regarding the issue. So I definitely don't feel as safe as I should be feeling. As more like observant, I want to make sure I see my surroundings more. I definitely don't feel as safe as I did. Knowing about it now just makes me feel comfortable. Just it's understanding and sharing like anything can happen. These three seniors are only a few of SU students who now feel unsafe on campus. But the acts of violence are just a small factor of insecurity in comparison to feeling uninformed. Students say they wish SU's Department of Public Safety would step in. They need to be reinformed of what their job is because, cause in my opinion, I feel like they are doing a sense of what they think their job is, but I feel like they're not making students feel safe and it's safety is in their name, yet there's no safety being put in for students. SU's campus has experienced multiple violence incidents in less than two weeks. Syracuse DPS reports two incidents of swatting, one on April 9th and one on April 14th. An incident of sexual assault was also reported in Thornton Park on April 14th, as well as a deadly shooting that occurred just a mile off SU's campus on Tuesday. Students say it seems that DPS has been sweeping this information under the rug. They definitely should be doing more. I feel like it shouldn't be just emails, maybe like mass announcements through like populated areas like the Shine Center. On a huge campus and like, I don't know, I feel like sometimes safety is not you know, very present in this campus. And many students are hopeful that DPS will begin to prioritize informing students about violence happening on campus. Reporting in studio tonight, Lauren Holdmeyer. Guys? Lauren, thank you for your coverage tonight. If you'll be on the roads tonight, meanwhile, you might want to slow down. The state of New York is using new cameras to catch speeders in work zones and on state highways and the New York State Thruway. Transportation officials say they'll be using new radar and speed cameras to enforce Governor Hochul's new traffic law. State police will also be going undercover in construction areas this week as part of an effort called Operation Hard Hat. The troopers will be dressed as highway maintenance workers as part of National Work Zone Awareness Week. 
Could it be you? The winning Mega Million ticket was sold in East Syracuse, but the winner has not yet been identified. The winning ticket was sold at Church Wine and Liquor on Kerrville Road. You can see the winning numbers on your screen now. According to the game's official website, the odds of winning the jackpot are 1 in 300 million, 575,350, which aren't pretty good odds. Take a look at some other things you're more likely to experience. You're 600 times more likely to win an Olympic gold medal, 23 times more likely to die in a tornado, and 300 times more likely to be struck by lightning. Now, Tyler, I haven't seen any lightning strikes here in central New York, but the temperatures have definitely gotten colder and it's a little misty out. To and say the there least. was even some like snow and like hail earlier. Is I don't know what's insane? going on. I thought it was 80 degrees. I thought we were basically in summer I at thought this we were point. Done. But let's Not find exactly. out from our weather anchor, Katie Bonkbox. So Katie, what's going on? Thanks, guys. Well, we're actually going to get a little bit luckier at the end of this week, but right now it's about 42 degrees outside, overcast skies, and you're right about that. There was some freezing rain this morning, and the rain has been pretty on and off, but it stayed pretty light overall. And we have some 15 mile per hour winds coming out of the west that continued from yesterday and is continuing to move today, which is where all that rain came from. And looking across the region, we're going to see that we're sitting in that middle range, about the lower 40s. Rome is the coldest over there at 37 degrees, and then the rest of the areas are like up in the upper. 40s and Elmira's at 55 the warmest and I know they're seeing some sun down there and we'll probably see that tomorrow and the day after but looking into tonight our low will be 37 degrees possible showers overnight it might go up until 2 a.m. but they're going to pretty much dissipate and 5 to 7 mile per hour winds there back to you guys Thanks, Katie. Now, I'm also hoping for some nice weather for University Union Block Party. University Union has announced a lineup for a block party this week. The annual concert will be headlined by singer and songwriter Amine and Faye Webster will also perform. Tickets are available through MyQs. They cost $25 for floor tickets and $20 for first level general admission. The event is happening in the Dome next Friday. Tyler, I never thought I'd see the day where Juice Jam's lineup is better than Block Party, arguably better than Block Party. Yeah, this was just very disappointing. I, just, I don't even know who these people are. I hadn't heard of any of them. You go back to 2017, we had Travis Scott, and I'm not too excited After about this After COVID, they went right downhill. That's, that's what I'm saying. Still to come on News Live at 6 tonight, a day of recognition for those seldom recognized. County Executive McMahon awarding 911 dispatchers for their service. And when we come back, I'll to tell you if the summer weather will return this weekend. Sadie Miller. My name is Luke Brady. Uh, I go by St. Luke. So this one I started with this guitar lick.
Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight he's earned that right. Because a few hours ago in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign. Not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzzed warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. You're watching Citrus TV News Live at 6 with Bradley Hoppenstein, Tyler O'Neill, and Katie Fong Vongsa. Now, your campus news leader continues. Welcome back to News Live at 6. They're the first people you call on what might be the worst day of your life. We're talking about 911 dispatchers who were recognized today by the county executive. Our John Parrick reports. A day of recognition for heroes always heard but seldom seen. No words could ever express my gratitude and the, the gratitude of the community for what they do. Today marks the 30th annual award ceremony for Onondaga County's 911 dispatch. <laughs> and dispatcher Kimberly Murphy received the Shane Daniels Positivity Award. Obviously, I'm everybody's best friend at work. I try to make everybody happy. I joke around a lot. For Murphy, it's important to be a bright smile in an often dark room. You know, when the cue light goes on, there's a hundred calls coming in about the same thing, and you took a call about a shooting, and then you took a call about a shooting. It's all bad, but you try to find the fun things in life. You know, you're used to seeing police, fire, EMS out in the street, so you kind of get to see what they do. A lot of people don't get to see what happens at 911. Julie Korn is the Onondaga 911 dispatch commissioner. I wish there was more I could do to reward them every single day, because it's deserved. And here to present the awards today was County Executive Ryan McMahon, who says the timing of this year's event comes at a unique hour, given recent shootings in Syracuse. The reality is, as our EMS, our fire, our police, uh, they get to where they need to go because of these brave men and women here. At the end of the day, we all work together and we're all a family. A family today receiving a long overdue day of appreciation in Syracuse. John Perrick, Citrus TV News. From the Citrus TV Weather Center, this is SU's most accurate weather forecast. I'm feeling the wind a lot right here, but you know, it's gonna be nicer the next couple days. Thanks guys. Well, I'm standing outside right here and it's really deceivingly warm. Um, the sun has come out finally after the crazy weather we've had today. But looking into our future radar, we're going to see that most of that weather is going to head away as we were in the rain system that's moving towards the other side. There is a system on the west, but that will probably end up cutting out and it'll just end up going away. No more rain for the next couple days and moving on into our country. We're going to see that there's some flood watches and warnings over in the upper Midwest and Northwest region. But as that crosses over the Green Lakes, it's not really going to hit us until Saturday if it still stays there. And looking into our five day forecast for Thursday, it's going to be partially sunny. We're going to get that summer weather back that we saw this past weekend, a high of 63 degrees, a low 51 degrees. And on Friday, that's going to be the best day you can get outside. It's going to be mostly sunny, a high of 84 degrees and a low of 57 degrees. Now we have some chances of showers throughout the day on Thursday and Friday, but they'll probably be unlikely as we head into Saturday. It's going to be mostly cloudy. Spring weather is going to come back a high of 77 and a low of 47, a steep drop, which we'll probably see overnight. And Sunday, those showers are going to come back a high of 51 degrees and a low of 38. And then on Monday, it's still going to be sunny. The sun's going to come back a high of 51 and a low of 36 degrees. And then it'll go in between partially sunny and partially cloudy. But overall, really nice weather for the next couple days leading into the weekend. So try to get outside and do whatever you can before it hits Sunday and it becomes a little colder. The showers and that spring weather is going to hit us and come back. And hopefully we'll see more weather next time. That's all I got. Thanks. Back to you guys. All right, Katie, thank you. I appreciate the music in the background as well. Tesla is cutting prices again for some of its Model Y and Model 3 EVs. It's the sixth time the automaker has lowered its prices this year. The company 
reported its quarter results late today and revenues down about 20% from last year in light of those price cuts. The company says it's also lowering prices in Europe, Israel, Singapore, and Japan as the global EV competition heats up. The Elon Musk-led company has cut prices of its base Model 3 by 11% so far this year, and the price of its base Model Y car by about 20%. These moves coming as the White House prepares to introduce tougher standards that will limit EV tax credits. You can catch more on market share Sunday, Morgan. But Tegan, what's going on in sports? Well, just one more match to go in the regular season for Syracuse women's lacrosse. Will they remain undefeated? Stick with us and you'll find out on the other side. They took over my bedroom. Come on, come on. Okay, Dad. One, two, three. Ah! Dad! You saved me. Okay? I'm fine, dear. Your hero needs you now, and AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. Everybody has a dream. was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. And now, your Citrus TV Sports Report. For the second home game in a row, Syracuse women's lacrosse won't be stepping foot in the JMA Wireless Dome, but where they play doesn't really seem to affect them since they're 15-0. Welcome into sports, I'm Tegan Brown. The Orange are going into the last regular season game as number one, with Northwestern just behind them in spot number two, a team they beat, by the way, in their first game of the season, 16-15. to But tomorrow's challenge will come as Syracuse takes on number five, Boston College. The Eagles are 12-3 on the season, with five players scoring at least five points in their win against Virginia last weekend. But let's take a look at the national championship contender here, shall we? Syracuse has the ACC Defensive Player of the Week in Delaney Schweitzer, plus Megan Tyrell has moved into second place on the all-time points list. And if she gets two more, she'll be in first. Plus, Emma Tyrell just matched her season high with six points in their last matchup. The two teams will face off tomorrow at the SU Soccer Stadium at 7. As for the men, they've definitely made the doubters think again after back-to-back -back road wins against ranked opponents. The Orange are ranked number 12 or 13, depending on which poll you're looking at, and they're no longer the lowest-ranked ACC team on there. But they'll have arguably their toughest game of the season, on Saturday. The number three Cavaliers are coming off of a one point loss to number two Duke, and they almost came back from the six goal deficit they faced at halftime. But on the other side, Syracuse's Joey Spelina is climbing the rookie ranks and is now fifth for goals and fourth for assists.
Texas. Face off is Saturday at 2 o'clock. Both lacrosse teams are on the plus side in their season records, but Syracuse softball isn't having that same luck. The ladies on the diamond have a 15 21 and one overall record, and they're in the middle of a doubleheader at Binghamton right now. They finished up their first game, and the Orange took the win against the Bearcats 4 to 2 with freshman Madison Knight throwing a complete game and tying her career high in strikeouts. As for the second game, that's still happening right now. Syracuse is up 1 0 with Kelly Breen getting that first home run of the game. And listen, it's been 110 days since Syracuse football stepped on the gridiron, but fans are only two days away from seeing them back in action. And while Garrett Schrader won't be at the helm due to a procedure on his throwing arm a few months ago, a lot of last year's gang will be back. So for one last time, that's all for sports. I'm Tegan Brown. Coming up on News Live at 6, we'll have your wake-up weather. Stick with us. Welcome into your wake up forecast. Tomorrow we're going to see some better temperatures. We're going to have a high of 64, but right in the morning we're going to start down at 40 degrees like we were feeling today, but around the afternoon it's going to get up to 58 degrees and 62 an hour before sunset. And the wind is actually going to die down, which is a little unusual, but it'll become partly sunny throughout the day. But for our last slide, we have our weekend outlook. On Friday, I definitely want to have some fun in the sun, but I know a lot of us have been feeling a little bit under the weather, so hopefully that helps us a lot. Wow, that looks like Tyler feeling a little under I was going to say, what is that <laughs> graphic? He but throughout yesterday's class, though. <laughs> oh, just wait till tomorrow's class. <laughs> well, thank you, Katie. Looking forward to the warmer temperatures. Meanwhile, Netflix is shutting down its DVD by mail service that set the stage for it to become the first of its kind in terms of streaming. Before the height of the digital age, Netflix had over 16 million subscribers to its DVD mailing. The service this, to this day still delivers films and TV shows by mail to customers' doors. The company says its final discs will be sent out on September 29th of this year. So guys, are there any movies you remember watching on DVD growing up as a kid? Um, any of the Barbie movies, you know? I was a big Barbie person. I was a Barbie girl. You got a Barbie yeah. coming out yep. this summer There too. is a new one coming yes. out this summer. Remember yes. when we tried out being Barbie characters? That was fun for us. <laughs> that was. Yeah. I, I feel like every road trip I took as a kid, I would get out the Lion King disc mm. and just pop that into okay. my little DVD player. So I saw that one way too many times. Yeah. Katie? I totally agree with you. Like any of the Disney movies, I really wanted to watch. So always got that sent to me. I was a big Cars fan. Cars always got <laughs> me going. And it was, was Disney, <laughs> Pixar. Yeah. 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 Fan. yeah. I love cars, <laughs> but I mean... <laughs> well, that's all the time we have for you on this Wednesday. For more of the latest, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Citrus TV News. For Tegan, Katie, Lord, and the entire Citrus TV News team, 
I'm Bradley Hoffman, Steve. And I'm Tyler Huniel. Have a great night, Syracuse. Watch a movie.